Welcome to St. Mary McKillop Parish, Oran Park, for our celebration of Mass. From all of us here, we hope you're having a wonderful weekend and thank you for joining us for Mass. We are a Catholic parish who seeks to form disciples, that's you and me, who joyfully follow Jesus Christ in every aspect of our lives, to be people who embrace, serve, nourish and respond to the needs of our neighbours. Mass will begin shortly, but I would now like to spend a moment sharing with you some of our parish updates. To mark this weekend's Social Justice Sunday, the Australian Catholic bishops have published a statement titled, To Live Life to the Full, Mental Health in Australia Today. As we know, the COVID-19 pandemic is affecting the mental health of many members of our parishes, schools and communities. As the bishops remind us, understanding mental health will help us be aware of the needs of one another, especially those who need our support. To access a copy of this statement, all you need to do is to go to a recent post on our parish Facebook page or to the link that can be found in the description for this Mass. Along with this live stream Mass, we now celebrate a 9.30am Sunday Mass at our Northern Mass Centre at Leppington that is open to 30 parishioners. There is now a strong recommendation from New South Wales Health that masks are worn if you are attending a place of worship. Therefore, following this advice, for their safety and the safety of others, parishioners will be required to wear a mask or a face covering when attending Mass in our parish. Monitors and Father David will also be wearing face coverings during the Mass. Also, rather than open bookings for Masses many weeks in advance, Bookings to attend one of our 9.30am Sunday Masses will be opened one week prior to the event. So if you would like to attend Mass next Sunday, the 6th of September, all you need to do is go to our parish website, marymckilloparish.org.au. For those without internet access, a phone-in option through the parish office is available on Tuesdays from 9.30am to 10.30am. During these weeks and months, when we haven't been able to gather together in large numbers for parish masses, sacramental celebrations and parish events, Father David and our parish leadership team have been meeting over Zoom with a group of parishioners to discern ways that we can continue to live out our vision. Mindful that it is unlikely, until a COVID-19 vaccine is found, that we will be able to gather in large numbers like we did prior to the start of this pandemic, as well as starting in coming weeks, a phone ministry that earlier in this time of pandemic was put forward as a new parish ministry to reach out to fellow parishioners. Making items such as holy water available to collect from our parish mass centres, holding virtual formation gatherings and reconnectors for all those who are involved or wanting to be involved in parish ministries, and transitioning our welcome gatherings for new parishioners and our baptism preparation sessions online. This focus group of parishioners and the parish leadership team are keen for us to also find creative ways outside of our weekly live stream, Mass on Demand, to gather as missionary disciples for prayer and worship and to grow in and share our faith. To this end, we would like to offer some opportunities to virtually gather during the week. Initially, we would like to offer three opportunities. A five session faith formation course called Presence, the Mystery of the Eucharist. Some one off sessions that will focus on topical issues of faith that inform, entertain and challenge. These sessions will be an opportunity to hear a guest speaker and then share in a time of discussion and conversation with fellow parishioners. And Wednesday worship gatherings, which will be virtually joined together on Wednesday evenings for praise and worship. 
However, before we can advertise the dates and the times for these opportunities for faith formation and prayer, we need some Zoom facilitators to make all this possible. So, if you would like to assist or for more information, please contact Father David by, by the parish office. Once facilitators have been confirmed, the dates and times for these gatherings will be announced. Don't forget about our regular parish events that are being held again virtually this week, including our Tuesday morning rosary over Zoom, Little Joey's playgroup at home on Thursday, and McKillop Youth Junior for our parishioners in years nine to years seven to nine that will be held this Friday. More information on these events can be found in the latest edition of the overview that is now available on the e-newsletter page of our parish website. Lots has continued to happen on our Southern Mass Centre site over the last few days. The roofing and external cladding of our extension has begun. While we know the pressures some households are facing at this time, it is the hope of Father David and our parish leadership team that those individuals and families who may be in a financial position to assist will consider making a gift to support this project on top of their regular plan giving. All offerings to support this project will be gratefully received and can be made through the link found in the description for this Mass or by contacting the parish office for other gifting methods. Well, now it's time for Mass. To get the most out of Mass, to truly prepare yourself, we encourage you to sit, stand, kneel, sing, do all the things that you might normally do in a church building. If you're new or it's been a while, just try to bring yourself to a place of stillness and to be present to everything that's going on, knowing that we're all connected wherever we are, from whichever device we're participating on, through our one loving God. I invite you now, if you can, to please stand and join in our gathering song in this place. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Well, I too welcome you as we gather on this Social Justice Sunday to participate in this live stream Mass. The beautiful flowers that are here before the altar tonight are in memory of the late Gladys Contista, one of our beloved fellow parishioners whose first anniversary occurs at this time. We especially join with her beloved husband, Con, who is participating with us in this live stream mass, with Gladys and Con's children and family, and all of those across our parish and around the country and the world who are mourning the death of Gladys Contista, a woman of faith who truly reminds us of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. So we offer this mass tonight for the repose of the soul of Gladys, we continue to lift up to the Lord all those who have lost their lives 
in the past week as a result of COVID-19. And we continue to pray for one another. Brothers and sisters, as we enter together into this mass, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned against you. Show us, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God and on earth. Peace to people. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. You have seduced me, Lord, and I have let myself be seduced. You have overpowered me, you were the stronger. 
I am a daily laughing stock, everybody's butt. Each time I speak the word, I have to hail and proclaim violence and ruin. The word of the Lord has meant for me insult, derision all day long. I used to say, I will not think about him. I will not speak in his name anymore. Then there seemed to be a fire burning in my heart, imprisoned in my bones. The effort to restrain it wearied me. I could not bear it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. O God, you are my God, for you I long. For you my soul is thirsting. My body pines for you like a dry, weary land without water. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. So I gaze on you in the sanctuary to see your strength and your glory. For your love is better than life. My lips will speak your praise. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. So I will bless you all my life. In your name I will lift up my hands. My soul shall be filled as with a banquet. My mouth shall praise you with joy. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. For you have been my help. In the shadow of your wings I rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. My soul is thirsting for you, O Lord my God. A reading from the letter of St Paul to the Romans. Think of God's mercy, my brothers, and worship him, I beg you, in a way that is worthy of thinking beings, by offering your living bodies as a holy sacrifice, truly pleasing to God. Do not model yourselves on the behaviour of the world around you, but let your behaviour change, modelled by your new mind. This is the only way to discover the will of God and know what is good, what it is that God wants, what is the perfect thing to do. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand to welcome the gospel. May the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ enlighten the eyes of our heart that we might see how great is the hope to which we are called. The Lord be with you and, and with your, your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to, to you, O Lord. Lord. Jesus began to make it clear to his disciples that he was destined to go to Jerusalem and suffer grievously at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes, to be put to death and to be raised up on the third day. Then taking him aside, Peter started to remonstrate with him. Heaven preserve you, Lord, he said. This must not happen to you. 
But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle in my path, because the way you think is not God's way, but man's. Then Jesus said to his disciples, If anyone wants to be a follower of mine, let him renounce himself and take up his cross and follow me. For anyone who wants to save his life will lose it. But anyone who loses his life for my sake will find it. What then will a man gain if he wins the whole world and ruins his life? Or what has a man to offer in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man is going to come in the glory of his Father with his angels. And when he does, he will reward each one according to to his behavior. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. I have to say that since our parish was founded five years ago, but especially during these days of this global pandemic, I praised and thanked our good God that our parish has been placed under the patronage of St. Mary MacKillop, a woman of faith who lived by the power of the cross. For in a real way, Mary MacKillop as a fellow pilgrim is a wonderful witness to you and to me of the message of this weekend's scripture readings. She knew what it was like, using the words from the prophet Jeremiah, to be seduced by the Lord, but to face, in her commitment to God, hardship, division. Mary MacKillop knew what it was to take up her cross and to follow Jesus. In many ways, I think, having listened to this weekend's readings, Mary MacKillop reminds us that to be a person of faith is not simply about saying prayers or participating in mass, but rather to be a person of faith is to be someone who gives expression to our prayer through our actions and through our words. To be a person of faith is to be someone who, like Jesus himself, is willing to share our gifts heroically with anyone in need, even to the end. Now, clearly, as we all know, to be heroic in the Christian sense of the word, to be women and men who are willing to take up our cross, at any time can be a challenging task. But I especially think it's challenging in this time, in our world, for so often at times, we live in this world that wants to rationalize suffering, even the suffering faced by many due to COVID-19. To see suffering as something gone wrong, as an absence of God, or actually even being punished by God, but as we see in today's scripture readings from the witness of those who first wrote and proclaimed these words, as we see in the life and the ministry of holy ones like Mary of the Cross MacKillop, it's only when you and I view the joys and struggles of our lives in the context of God, in the context of the cross and resurrection, that suffering both our own suffering and the sufferings of others can become for us a more intense experience of God's presence and of God's promise. As a faith-filled parishioner dying of cancer once said to me, Father David, she said, every time I feel that God has abandoned me in my pain, I look at the crucifix and then I remember that God is not absent, 
actually God is here right by my side. You and I, sisters and brothers, in the words of today's beautiful psalm, truly thirst for God. And as we gather, no matter what device we're using to participate in this Mass, we gather to be nourished. We gather to receive God's Word. We gather to make our act of spiritual communion so that our thirst can be quenched by the one who calls us like him to take up our cross. We gather on this Social Justice Sunday, prayerfully remembering especially all those living with mental illness and those who minister and support them as they carry their crosses. But today, as well as praying for this intention, let us pray as always for each other that we will find great strength and great courage, not only from the faith-filled witnesses of people like our patron Mary McKillop, but the example of Jesus. For today and always, we remember the example of the one who first took up his cross. May the example of Christ inspire us, no matter the struggles we face, no matter the crosses we bear. May you and I remember and then proclaim through action and word to one another that yes, Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ promises you and he promises me that he will come again. If you are able, I invite you to stand with me now as we renew our commitment of faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. My dear friends, we do not ask to gain the world, but to deny ourselves and follow Christ. As faithful disciples, we present our prayers. For the church, following the example of Pope Francis, that she will speak for, pray with, and give support to refugees who in great numbers languish in refugee camps across the world. That safety and peace and new opportunities will soon be theirs. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to lose our lives for Christ, that we may surrender the dreams and ambitions for power and glory and be open to God's call to lay down our lives in loving service to the elderly, the young, the sick, the poor, or those who have been abused. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For migrants who have chosen to come to Australia to create a new home for themselves and their children, that they may contribute well to the building up of a just and compassionate society. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people 
especially those acutely affected by the coronavirus pandemic. That we who are merely inconvenienced by limitations and restrictions may exercise patience, tolerance and a sense of calm as health measures and new ways of operating are put into place to protect the elderly and vulnerable. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear our prayer. For a renewed sense of awareness of mental health on this Social Justice Sunday, that our parish will be a place of acceptance, care and healing, so that all will be able to live life to the full in the love of Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have shared in Eucharist and have passed through death, especially those who have died from COVID-19, that they may be gathered together in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. O God, who transform your people by the renewal of our minds, Help us to discern your will and to do what is good and pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what is celebrated in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners. And he became a neighbour to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim.
you are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Saviour, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favour on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your son. In his bo in body and blood, we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Brian, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters, especially Gladys Contista, who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Mary of the Cross, MacKillop, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him 
and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. No matter what device we're using to participate in this Mass, no matter if we are alone or with members of our household, we are truly gathered together around this altar. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Though during these days of the COVID-19 pandemic, we're unable to gather in large numbers to celebrate the Mass. We are invited as we participate in this Mass to now pray together and act a prayer for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. 
I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. As we gather for these masses, there are many intentions and prayers that we hold within our heart. In a spirit of thankful praise, I invite us now, having listened to God's word, having participated in this mass, and prayed together our prayer for spiritual communion, to spend a moment once again praying for one another, bringing our needs and intentions before Jesus, praising God for the gift of his Son. Let us draw all of these prayers that are in our hearts together as we sing our song of praise. Let us pray. 
renewed by this bread from the heavenly table. We beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you in our neighbour through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As always, I thank you for participating with me in this live stream mass. Be assured of my prayers for you. A big thank you as always to Margie who assisted us through music ministry, to Matt in our AV crew, and to Aaron Gillard, our coordinator of welcome and engagement, a member of our parish leadership team who proclaim God's word. A big thank you too to all those who continue during this time of global pandemic, share so willingly of your God-given gifts of time, talent and treasure so that we can continue to be the parish that God calls us to be. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. i